with the Kemper, I have a few go-to tried and true methods that I find have really helped me in both my workflow and tweaking and getting things where I want them. And I guess you can call them tips and tricks. Uh, for me, before I really touch anything on an amp profile, you know, down here you have your EQs and everything. And you know, most time I barely even touch this. Um, the first thing that I do is um, I hold down this amplifier soft button here and that opens up all the different parameters within the amplifier section. And the first thing that I touch, um, usually, if I need to, is the definition control. Think of it like a tone knob on an amp. Uh, you can either bring in a ton of highs or you can bring out a ton of highs. And like, for example, here is uh, a pretty, you know, slightly overdriven, you know, guitar sound. <laughs> So listen carefully, as I turn up the definition control, you can kind of hear a little bit more of those highs coming through and those lows are kind of disappearing. You go all the way up, it's not gonna sound good, but. Then watch this too. You go all the way down, you lose a lot of that sparkle. So for me, um, it's an incredible tool to dial in the way that you want the amp to respond to your guitar, or in this case, the profile. Um, so for me, if I have a Tele or my Fano with P90s or a guitar Filtertrons, um, this is the first thing I go to and really I can make any guitar sound great with any amp profile. Secondly, something that I also find really, really helpful is power sagging. Um, power sagging doesn't really get a lot of love. Um, it's people don't really know what it does, so they're just like, ah, we don't talk about it. But um, for me, I found this to be a really helpful tool when it comes to um, both capturing the way an amp responds to breakup, um, but also the way it responds to pedals. A profile responds different um, with your guitar plugging straight into it using the effects than it does with a pedal board going into it. When you're hitting the front of a profile with an overdrive pedal, I find that turning up this power sagging a little bit helps it respond a little bit more like an amp. Like it compresses, but it doesn't compress and just kind of fizzle out. It like gets robust and it's just like you feel something happening. And um, to me, that has been really helpful, um, especially when I'm using my pedal board in front of the Kemper, which I do all the time. Um, that's been a game changer for me. Another thing that I really, really love and something that I think is worth showing you guys is Whenever I'm within a performance and I'm using you know, all my effects here, I have my compressor, like a pog sound, a couple overdrives, I have my delays and a reverb. And this is kind of basically like a, um, it's like a layout of my pedal board. Like, I mean, here's like my, my drive sound and then typical dotted eighth here. I created this one to be like a uh, warm tape delay. But then if you morph it, which we'll talk about later, um, it turns into like a tube echo, which is one of my favorite delays off of a old DL4. It's very like fluttery and um, very cool, interesting delay. But um, anyways, all I'm saying is I've recreated my board here. I don't really want to add in a ton of, a ton of different effects. So for me, rather than making a whole new performance and trying to do all these again, um, I just, if I want a different profile, I just go to the stack section, hold that down, and then you can use this browse knob right here to browse through all different profiles that you have available. So for me, if I want something with more of a Fender kind of flair or a Marshall or another Vox type thing, like I go to that and that's where I can find something that best suits the guitar I'm using. Thank you.